Hi, welcome. It is Saturday and if you are new here, welcome. My name is Lisa and I am here for you every Wednesday and Saturday with my wellness videos. Today I'm talking about caffeine. Caffeine came into the picture for me last fall. I attended a mental health first aid training and that was the first time I'd ever really given any thought at all to how caffeine was impacting my journey or impacting my mental health. Um, and during that session, the mental health first aid training, it came up that obviously caffeine is a stimulant. And so when they were talking about people who live with anxiety disorders and using stimulants such as caffeine, it can have an impact on their anxiety because yes, it boosts your alertness and it boosts your um, mood, but it can also mimic the symptoms of anxiety and it can increase the chances of you having panic attacks. And with prolonged use or a lot of caffeine intake in a day, um, you can experience some pretty severe symptoms, but then you can also experience withdrawal of caffeine when you're no longer um, taking in that amount of caffeine. So that was something that I hadn't really thought of. There were definitely things that I'm aware of certain sensations that you get that kind of mimic an anxiety attack or mimic, mimic a panic attack that I can definitely now see how caffeine would do that. So, you know, you, you, yeah, you get that alertness, but you kind of get that racing heart or you feel warm and things like that. And all of a sudden you may just be like, oh, am I having a panic attack? And as soon as you start thinking, am I having a panic attack? You have a panic attack. Unfortunately, I've been there, I've lived through it, it's horrible. Um, so yeah, that was one of the things that they had brought up in this um, first aid training. So basically Health Canada recommends that a healthy adult get really between like 400, 450 milligrams of caffeine a day. But if you're an adult who is living with a mental illness, especially an anxiety disorder, they really don't recommend that you intake any more than 300 milligrams a day. So to put that in perspective, an eight ounce cup of coffee would give you 100 milligrams of caffeine. A uh, eight ounce cup of tea would give you about 50. Um, a pop, whether it's diet or regular, would also give you about 50. An energy drink, you're looking at about 80 milligrams. And this is for about like eight ounces. So for me, the surprising part that I found, like this is one of my go-to tea mugs. I have lots of mugs that are about this size. This holds 16 ounces. So a couple of years ago when I was working in the office before the pandemic, I would have probably a cup like this in the morning before I left for work. I would have a cup of tea when I got to work and then probably a cup of tea like at lunchtime. So I was having probably about three cups. So I was probably getting about the 300 milligrams of caffeine a day um, with my tea. Then the pandemic hit and I started working from home. And this was my go-to mug, like I said. And so it went from having like three cups of tea a day to having like probably five or six of these a day. Um, and that holds 16. So we're looking at 100 right there with everyone I was taking. So I started drinking like 600 milligrams of caffeine a day. And I didn't find that it was interrupting my sleep because I really wasn't having it past like probably two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I didn't notice that I was having more anxiety attacks or anything like that. So I wasn't really worried about that. I drink a lot of water, so I wasn't worried about caffeine being a diuretic and being dehydrated or anything like that. Um, Cause it has a very limiting dehydrating effect. And so I, I don't feel like that's a concern there for me. Um, what I was finding though, that when I was waking up in the morning, I felt like crap. Um, and I started to think like, oh my goodness, is this like withdrawal? from caffeine because I hadn't had it since like three o'clock in the afternoon and then I'm not having it until probably seven or eight the next morning. Um, so I started thinking about that. Then just 
few months ago, probably six or seven months ago, I had mentioned before, I read this book when I was looking for anti-inflammatory ideas because of my arthritis. So this is Meals That Heal Inflammation. In there, she talks about caffeine intake. And she was saying that, you know, depending on how much caffeine you're, you're taking in, it can increase your loss of certain water-soluble vitamins, like your B vitamins, and it can impact your minerals, such as like your calcium and things like that. So it talked about in that book, limiting, of course, the amount of caffeine that you take, and to talk about not taking like your supplements and your vitamins and your minerals and things like that with a caffeinated beverage, which I was doing every morning. I was, you know, yeah, I would take it with water, but I was following it with tea right away, not realizing that I was impacting the absorption of those minerals and vitamins in my body. So I really wanted to look at that and I wanted to see how far off I was from what like most people thought were the normal or average amounts. So I went on my WW Connect and I posted a poll for the other WW members. And I said like, on average, how many cups of caffeine are you drinking to like in a day? And I think I put like zero to three and then, or like zero to two and then like three to six and then like six or more or something like that. Um, there was like a thousand people respond and the majority, like by far, had between zero to three cups of caffeine or like caffeinated cups of caffeinated beverage a day. And I was sitting there like with my sixth cup of tea going, oh, maybe I drank too much caffeine. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. Um, so I had to take a, like an honest look at it like I do with my journey and say, is this impacting? Is it impacting my inflammation? Is it hurting my, my arthritis? Is it hurting my mood? Is it causing my sleep disruption? Is it causing the headaches that I have in the morning? So I've worked really, really hard to decrease the amount of caffeine that I take in a day. And I feel really good that I, I basically have it down to like the 300 or less milligrams of caffeine a day. Tea is my only caffeinated, caffeinated beverage. I don't drink pop. I don't drink energy drinks. I don't drink coffee or anything like that. So I have gotten myself to three of these a day, which is my 300 milligrams of caffeine. Um, the rest of the time I drink decaf or like an herbal tea or I drink warm water and lemon or just straight up water. And it's made a difference. It honestly has. I feel better waking up in the morning. Um, I've definitely noticed improvements in my sleep that I didn't even realize I was having problems with before. Um, I've noticed my alertness in the morning. So it's like, I don't need the tea to like wake me up. I enjoy it in the morning and it does give me that little bit of a boost, but it's not like the end all be all. So that is my challenge to you this week. Take a look at the amount of caffeine you're drinking, figure it out. So like if you drink a medium Tim's coffee or tea, that's about 10 ounces. So you could be looking at every medium tea from Tim Hortons is either like 100 milligrams of caffeine for a coffee or 50 milligrams for um, a tea. Just calculate it. See how much caffeine that you're drinking in a day. Are you taking your supplements with it? And then adjust it see if it feels any different. And this, like anything else, comes down to you and your body and how you feel and how it feels for you and doing what is right for you. So I would never tell anyone like, oh, you have to limit that or you have to reduce it or anything like that. Do what's right for you, but investigate it a little bit trial and error. See how you feel if you don't take your supplements with it. See how you feel if you don't drink it after three o'clock. You know, see how you feel if you limit yourself to three cups a day. And then let me know in the comments how you do and how you're feeling. So thank you so much for spending some time with me today. It was wonderful to spend this time with you. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I'm here every Wednesday and Saturday for you. So take care and I will see you real soon in the next video.